Hello everyone, Joe Gilletti here, Amazon number one best-selling author and co-owner in Jumpstart Your Book, and today we have a special presentation from a guy who helps sales managers turn their sales teams around, turn their companies around, and get really prosperous. Ladies and gentlemen, dress to the nines, check out Richard Trevino. <laughs> Pleasure to have you on, Richard. Richard, tell us a little bit about your book that's coming out this week, and uh, what inspired you to write it? Awesome. Joe, uh, glad to be here with you. Uh, the name of the book is Taming Turnover, Creating a Company Culture Where Insurance Agents Prosper. And one of the reasons I wanted to uh, write this book uh, was because I wanted to really speak to insurance managers specifically that were struggling in creating a good atmosphere, a good company culture, a good culture on their staff and their in their office. Uh, you know, majority of the time you see a lot of places where they're just really down and people are, are struggling and it's it's one of the worst in the industry for retention. There's just mass amounts of turnover. It's a revolving door. And I wanted to be able to speak to people because I've had great success in being able to have uh, a high retention and super low um, turnover. And people love working with me. So I wanted to be able to help other people to get to that place as well. You know, it's interesting. I, I hear you talking about turnover, and I know that a lot of sales managers and stuff out there struggle, you know, to keep to keep the pipeline full of qualified, you know, whether it's agents or salespeople or whoever it is. But in general, the thought is just, you know, if, the, if they don't succeed, just kick them out. I mean, only, you know, one out of five or one out of 10 is going to be a decent salesperson. I mean, that's kind of the mindset. So who cares about company culture? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I read a, a statistic not too long ago, and it said that uh, about 8% of people, um, 8 out of 100 basically agents that actually got into the insurance uh, uh, industry, that they would be successful. The other 90, 92%, it's like, you know, what about them? I mean, that's, that's terrible retention, if you ask me. I mean, you got a lot of people that are getting into an industry that, that they want to be successful, they, they want to do well, they want to earn good money, and don't have time freedom and different things that the insurance industry has to offer but I mean that's that's crazy man I mean 8% make it it's wild so what would you say the industry is doing wrong what's causing that 92% failure rate um, I touch on that in my book um, one of the big things I, I have, I've seen you know I've been in the industry industry for about 11 years already uh, nine, uh, nine of those years I was uh, managing uh, very closely with a um, you know, amount of, of, of insurance agents and, you know, some of them were veterans that had been there for 15, 20, 25 years. Others were brand new agents that had come in that, that uh, uh, somebody else had hired them or some of, a lot of them, were, I, I hired them myself. And um, one of the big things that I saw that was not going right and that, you know, that a lot of man managers were making a mistake was that they weren't giving that uh, extra personal um time yeah. and relationship and connecting with their people. That's one of the biggest things. They weren't connecting with them. They were treating them like a number. And I think that's one of the hugest problems in the industry right now is that people are just a number. Mm. They're, just an, they're just an employee. They, all, all they see is, a, is an employee number there. They don't see the name. They don't see the face. They don't see the family behind them. They don't see their desires, their dreams, aspirations. They don't see anything. It's just a number. And people are disposable. And this is the mindset that corporate America has, has gotten into. And, and unfortunately, the insurance industry is terrible about that. Well, isn't that because there is such a large failure rate? I mean, which one came first? Was it the, the problem with retention? And then they started treating them like a number? And, or, I mean, or is it the other way around? Or how do, you, how do you speak to that sales manager who's saying, Look, I'd invest into some people, but if 92% of them are going away anyways, why, why spend the time investing when they're going to be gone in three weeks? If I could speak to a manager that's listening and, and, and they're in that position, that exact position that you just said right now, I would tell them this. Are you tired? I mean, it doesn't matter what came first, you know, the egg or the chick. It doesn't matter what came first. If, if, you, if, you, you, if you have a problem that, that there is a retention problem, there is... Uh, you can't hold on to people. People are leaving you or you're having to fire people all the time. You've got a problem either way. So it doesn't matter what, which one came first. Just realize, number one, there is a problem. It, it does not have to be like this. this. The industry does not have to be like that. But in our minds, as an insurance manager, we are uh, 
we're almost, uh, as we get into management and we get into this industry, we, we kind of are going through everything. We start accepting the fact that this is just the way it is. It's just part of the industry. But the reality is it doesn't have to stay that way. And if I could speak to a manager and to tell them uh, something um, of value, I would say this. Stop what you're doing. First of all, get the book. Mm -hmm. There are some massively powerful, powerful, powerful principles there. The book right. is only 50 pages long. Listen, I'll be very honest with you. I've gotten caught up so much in the last 11 years in this industry and my work and just nose to the to the to this grindstone and constantly going, 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 and doing my work, but I never lifted my face up to to focus on on uh, a great deal of personal development. Now, a lot of areas of my life, you know, I, I would try to make sure that I'm I'm developing and growing, but I never realized that you could really, really be able to grow a whole lot more if you just step back a little bit. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, um, my 11 years uh, in this industry, I've learned a couple of things. And one of those things is this, people are everything. People are everything. It, if you don't learn how to take care of your people and you don't know how to treat people right with respect, care for them, and not treat them like a number, you're always going to have that revolving door. But the moment that you stop and you actually care about somebody, but see, that's the problem, though. That, that, that's the whole problem is the mindset is always this, you know, don't manage with your heart. And everybody would tell you that. All upper management will tell you that. Don't manage with your heart. Manage with your head. It's numbers. But let me tell you something. If you want to be successful, and you can ask some of the, some of the most, most powerful uh, um, business people, and they'll tell you the same thing. Success will come when, you're, when you are fully, fully engaged with your people, you're committed with your people, and your people stop becoming a number. So is this theory for you, or, or what's happened in your life that's made you so dogmatic and so um, passionate about it that you decided to write a book on this? You know, after, after 11 years, Joe, with the same company, uh, I, I got into the insurance industry when I was 21 years old. I was just about to get married. I just moved out of my house for the first time. I just finished college. And, you know, it, it was a lot of firsts. And this was my first career job, you know, or career. And um, I was extremely passionate about it. I love it. I, I fell in love with it. I was good at what I did. I was good at taking care of my clients. I was good at, the, the, uh, at, 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 at insurance. I was good at it. And I was good with people. So, um, I continued going and, um, you know, just progressing, moving forward. And I went up the ladder and, and, uh, and I, a lot of opportunities were opened up for me. And, and, um, I'm, you know, 11 years later, uh, I got stuck in a position that a lot of people, unfortunately, uh, fall under. And I, there was a, some changes in upper management. And unfortunately, you know, there I, I was in a position that that I should have been able to move into a a, a better opportunity and a, and, a, and a promotion. But when you've got a lot of politics involved and stuff, um, and you don't know the right people, it doesn't matter how good you are, what you're doing, or your impact on people's lives it doesn't matter. Politics usually wins. But so I was passed up on a couple opportunities, and that's okay. I don't mind being passed up, um, but there should be still opportunities for, for, for people that want to be able to continue to grow and have the numbers. Yeah. Um, so for me, I, I saw for the last few years um, a really high turnover in our office and uh, within other staffs and, and other companies and stuff like that because I have friends uh, in other companies. And it's just I, I consistently uh, constantly kept on seeing this pattern. And – for me, I had actually at one point in, in, in my career, I didn't have great retention. I was flipping people out as well. People were quitting on me. Uh, I was firing people and because I was listening to, to my upper management and stuff. And I, 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 was, I, I experienced terrible turnover. And I got to the point where a light finally turned off. And I said, I have to change something because if I don't, I'm going to die. Literally. Yeah. Because I was, my health was going out the window. I was losing my uh, losing my 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 uh, relationship with my wife, uh, I was I was you know I was not engaged in in, in church activities and things, other extracurricular uh, activities that I'm involved with, very passionate about. 
I started really losing out. And I, I said to myself, if I don't do something, I'm going to go crazy or I'm going to lose, you know, everything. And so I stopped. Now, and I, now, so if you want to know what Richard did to turn things around, you have to turn in next week. No, I'm just kidding. I'm totally teasing. <laughs> no, what did you do to, to turn it all around? I know, I mean, we're feeling it. We're feeling the pain with you. We know what it is to be in that struggle moment where, man, it just isn't coming together. What did you do? What turned it around for you? Honestly, man, I, I got to the point. It was, I think I was like in one of these little small towns out at like nine nine thirty at night, and I was having to run an open agency because I didn't have somebody there because we had recently had to fire them, and I was there at nine thirty collecting a premium for a client that had a bank draft fall off of the bank, and that was the time they were going to be there. And I said, "This is this is you know I don't mind going the extra mile, but I mean this was ridiculous." And I had a couple of open agencies actually at the time. And I was working Monday through Sunday. I was putting in, man, 12, 14, 16 hour a day. I mean, it was crazy. It was really, really crazy. Constantly on the go. I hadn't seen my family. And I stopped and I said, something has to change. The light bulb went off and I realized I started, I just stopped and I started doing some self-evaluation and really doing some soul searching and saying, I keep hearing that everybody else is the problem. I keep hearing that the agents, the agents keep pointing the fingers out. But like they say, when you point the finger out, you got three fingers pointing back at you. So it's common sense stuff, right? But when you're stuck in that tunnel vision mindset, you don't see it. And so I stopped and I realized, is it them or is it me? And I was, you know, a, a big enough person to be able to stop and reflect and say, you know, Richard, maybe you're the problem. What is it that you could maybe do better? More or different. Listen, Matter of fact, that's that, actually that, one of the, that's, that's painful. I, I'm I'm just this. sitting on the other side of that. That's painful. I mean, if you're watching this, um, what Richard is saying in a very nice and gentle way as he tells his own story is maybe all of those sales agents uh, that are working for you and failing, maybe not to give them an excuse in any way, but maybe you're to blame. Absolutely. You who's watching this, which is a little, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, certainly there's people, I mean, certainly there's people who don't even put the effort in. There's people who don't care. There's people who whatever. But really, is it all 92% of the people leaving the insurance, you know, industry that didn't care, that didn't have a dream, that didn't want to succeed, right? So uh, I'm feeling that pain. So what do we do, Richard? We're, we're in pain now. Thanks a lot for twisting the knife in our hearts. What, what, <laughs> yeah, what do we do? Well, you know, Joe, again, you, you've, you have to get to a point where you're like they say, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I like what you just said right now about, you know, is it them? I mean, you know, is it me? Who is it? It's like they always say there's people say that there's two sides of us to every story, right? I say there's three sides to every story. What he said, what she said, and was actually said. Mm. You know what I mean, so there, like you said, there are that there that portion of people that they didn't have the the dedication. They weren't committed to what they were doing. Uh, they just were there temporarily, just kind of just testing the waters. They were they weren't related to what they were doing. Uh, and then you also have those people though that they were really committed. They were dedicated. They didn't know what to do, but they had the heart for it. But you know, so so at that point, I had to just figure out you know and ask myself, okay. Naturally, I knew which ones, some of those, some of the ones that they weren't, they weren't ready. You know, they just, they weren't committed, but I had to ask the hard question, like you said, and say, Richard, listen, out of all these people here, which ones left and you really could have helped them? Which ones did you really not go the extra mile for them? Which ones uh, of these agents did you not know their why, why they were actually here? Which of these agents did you really know well enough to know that, that you know exactly what their reason for making a better income was. And, you know, Joe, to be honest with you, there was some of those that I said, you know what? Shoot, I don't even remember some of their last names. That's terrible. Right. But my mindset was that of the corporate mindset, you know, and, and what had been fed to me all these years. But I had to make a conscious decision to say, if I'm going to fail, I'm going to fail on my terms. Nice. I'm there is no way I'm going to fail and be demoted or get fired 
because of what somebody else told me to do and I'm going to get in trouble for it. You feel me? Yeah. So for me, I said, I've got to make a conscious decision today going forward. Um, I'm going to do things differently. And when my manager, thankfully, you know, I actually had a, a, a I actually had a very, very great, good, uh, good manager, uh, Robert Garcia. And he was, he was a tremendous manager. He believed in me. Um, the management I'm talking about is above him. So it was the upper management. He was a very good, good guy. Very, very good uh, mentor. Always was there for me. Always was, was supporting my, my success. Um, and would always, you know, have those one-on-ones with me to help me ask, ask, answer some of these questions as well. But when I stopped and I said, going forward, I'm going to change this. I'm going to change that. I'm going to change this and I'm going to change that. Some of those, this and that's are in the book. You got to check out the book. Um, uh, we're not I trying to t- follow, we're just running out of time. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, I will tell you this. Um, w- when I made that decision to, to change, I said, it's either going to work or it's not. And I began to think to myself, if I was an agent again, how would I want my manager to be able to be with me? What kind of support would I want? What kind of, of environment, what kind of culture would I want and appreciate working here? Because everybody hated what, what they were doing. Mm. People were, were, were tired. They hated the atmosphere. Nobody wanted to come to work. It wasn't a good place to be. And I stopped and I thought to myself, I was an agent. What would I want? And that's what I began to do. I began to create around me and with the people around me um, an environment and a culture, a company culture of winning and a people of success and a people of, 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 of paychecks going up and people wanting to come to work and people loving to come to work and people not only, not only that, but them actually liking their, their boss or their manager. Mm. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy. But, but again, I did that because I said either if I'm going to, it's either going to work or not work. And if it works, I did it on my terms. If it doesn't work, Hey, you know what? By all means, by all means, demote me, fire me, do whatever you got to do. But, but I tried, and at least it was on my terms. And did it work? What happened? Absolutely. Absolutely <laughs> worked. Yeah, we, tur- we turned it around. We turned it around. I ended up getting manager of the year um, the last four years. I think it was like three out of those four years. And so we did. We did exceptionally well. I, out of my staff that I had, uh, we had some people that were seemingly some of the worst agents in the district, and we turned them around completely, put them on some good uh, um, Plans of uh, plans of action, you know, and and got them on a, on a on a pace where man, they were they started soaring. Uh, one of the big things was they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what was expected of them. They didn't know how to do it. So I took the time out to be able to to invest in them and by focusing on them and creating a good culture for them, making sure they were happy. You know, I read a statistic not too long ago that said that um, happier uh, um, employees will produce. I think it was twelve percent more production than the average person and an unhappy um, employee will actually do, I think it was uh, 15% less than what the average would, would do. I mean, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, you, you think that people would, would, would try to be able to create something where your, your employees and your, your agents were happier. And so that's what I did. I began to think, put myself in their shoes and not so much as be their, their boss or their supervisor, but and their manager, but actually be their accountability partner. And that worked out tremendously. Wow. So uh, where do people go if they want more information, want to learn more about um, your whole paradigm and approach to uh, managing sales teams uh, in general, right? But, but specifically, this book was written with the insurance sales manager in mind, but it can apply to lots of different industries. Is that right? Absolutely, Joe. I mean, you know, this, this book was, it was, it was directed at the, the, uh, to the, the uh, sales managers in the insurance industry and to um, managers in the, in the industry, in the insurance industry. But the, these powerful principles that we speak about in the book, man, they are, they're universal. You can use them if you're in any types of sales jobs. You can use them, any manager, any leader in any kind of organization, whether it be a church, whether it be a work, whether it be car sales, whatever. If you're in, in, in some capacity where you are leading people, you have to hear. I mean, you have to read. You have to read these 50 pages. It's 50 pages. If you don't like reading, I understand. I understand. But listen, I purposely wrote this book with 50 pages so that everybody, everybody could read it and there would be no excuses. It can literally change 
your entire workplace, which will also change your entire world because most of us, we spend most of our time at work. Right. So, any, uh, I know that you're doing a big push. The book is being released this week. There's, there's actually a release date, release date that you're asking everybody to do. You don't need to leave all those details here. But is there any kind of incentive or anything like that that you're giving away as part of that whole promotion? We've got, we've got a discounted price, uh, discounted rate right now. So the, the, we're giving a, a discounted price for everybody that that uh, uh, signs up for the book and buys the book on Friday. We're going to be doing it at uh, seven o'clock um, Friday, the thirtieth, this Friday. Um, at 7 p.m., 7 to 9, okay. uh, Central Standard Time. So awesome. get the book, go on, click on the link, go. I'm telling you, it's 50 pages, guys. The new year is getting ready to come in. Everybody's going to start this new year, new me, uh, you know, new year's resolutions and stuff. Listen, there is no better way to start this thing yeah. off than to be in this book. It's so cool. Definitely go out and get the book. I mean, I come from the marketing side, which is about filling the front, you know, and it's interesting. It, it's it, it feels like the insurance industry has a double job, which makes it difficult for, for companies. Not only do you have to fill the front of the office place with quality leads and sales and things of that nature, but when you're turning over 92% of your employees per year, you're constantly in the search for, for more talent. And how amazing would it be if instead of having to do a marketing funnel for getting a bunch of customers and have a constant marketing funnel going to get more agents, if you just had great quality agents who stayed with you for a long time. What a novel idea, right, right Richard? <laughs> absolutely, man, absolutely. I mean, you know, if you're tired, if you're, you gotta be sick and tired of being sick and tired. If you're tired of doing all the extra work, look, somebody's gonna have to do the work, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be the management. So, I mean, if it's gonna fall on you, if you're gonna have to work anyway, just work smart, work smart. The people that look, the answer to all of your problems is right in front of you. The people are there, but you've got to begin to have a new mindset of how your approach is with them. Listen, if, if you go to a thermostat and you turn it just one slight click over to the right or one slight click to the left, it could literally take a 2,500 square foot home and change the entire uh, um, temperature in there with one little small adjustment. With this book, it talks about just some few adjustments can change everything. Awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you got it. Just click the link above or in the comments here on this page, and you definitely got to check out Richard's book. I'm Joe Giletti. Been a pleasure to be with you today, Richard, and uh, great stuff. Looking forward to, of course, I've already read the book, and I, you know, I, I put my review on it. It's amazing. It's impressive, and uh, looking forward to uh, let's help Richard hit bestseller status this week, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon.